first step here that I didn't uh, do on camera completely was to install the damper <clears throat> the inserts. And these are 50 millimeter Bilstein. <clears throat> uh, they have a series of bushings inside that they, they uh, slide into. And I put some of this Motul uh, shock oil all over the uh, damper before I slid it in. Once it's in, uh, this nut on the bottom uh, fastens things tight. And I have a uh, sealing a crush washer with a rubber seal on it that I put on down there. And this is the fill hole from which we're going to fill the damper with 60 milliliters of oil once we're done. Once this goes on and gets tightened, the next piece to go on is this cap, which is threaded also. I'm going to put some uh, oil on it, gently put it down, and screw that on, and then align it through the holes so these hoses can pass through the holes. a lot better than before. And then our spring front and rears are the same height, the springs. A lot of the stuff on Subarus is really close, like they both use the uh, McPherson suspension. So um, funny enough, like the springs are the same height, but this, the rears are slightly uh, smaller diameter in co the coils. So that's how I was able to remember which is which. There's been some off-camera wrangling, but it's all together. Um, what I did notice is the hoses that I measured initially, uh, these guys, which are dead, um, same length, but now that I've lowered the, uh, the car, I think it like has an effect on that. Just the routing mostly. It's not like the length from the top to the bottom didn't change, but the angle changed a little. Right now the height is matched to the height of the standard strut, which I have on the floor. I measured from the top to the bottom hole, and uh, it's the same 24 and a half inches. I'm kind of thinking when I put this down on the ground, it's going to be dumped because this is going to compress a bit. The thing I don't know is how much the really soft factory th spring compresses when you put the car down. So I've got to start somewhere. I'm just going to do it even though uh, I fear they might have to come off completely to uh, adjust the height. I guess we'll see. So it turns out 60 milliliters is uh, two ounces. So we're going to do that. It's like 2.02, but I mean, really, who cares? Don't tell anybody. Given that these had about zero oil in them before, I think this will be a welcome change. And credit to uh, my friend John Hall who told me the uh, the measurements here. Motul gives you this like little loop to hook on and hook your finger and pull the thing out, but it just breaks off instantly. I, I swear it's like a 100% uh, failure rate for this thing. So the cap is stuck in there right now, which may be actually playing to my advantage because it's pouring really slow. So that's two. All right, <clears throat> now this feels like a final ceremony here. Just my sweet funnel. is going to be back up for sale. Hopefully uh, someone buys it and maybe enters Mount Washington or something cool with it. That would be pretty neat. A lot of people have asked me if I'm going to buy it back and I suppose I could but with this other project happening it doesn't make a lot of sense because my time is very limited. Um, also, like in a way, my tastes have sort of changed. I think it's just a product of being older and like building, like buying a car that would be like ultimately the fastest car on the hill, and, like do pikes with it or do Mount Washington with it would be cool. Like, but I, I wouldn't want to try to build that car because I have a lot of respect now for 
how much work it takes. Like my good friend Bill is building a car that will do that. And it's just, he has this incredible skill to be able to pull that off. I think I, I'd like to drive one of those cars, but not build one. I think now, if I bought another Evo, I'd buy uh, maybe an Evo 4 and do like a hill climb car, but not like a ultimate open class car. Build like a street modified one with a cage. If I ever redid the Pleasure Evo again, it would be like to a sort of like a group A standard. I wouldn't cut the fenders or anything. I'd make it go as fast as it could with a standard body, which would be really fast. It wouldn't really make too much of a difference, but I think my tastes now are like originality, restoring things. It would be neat to build cars like that for a living. Like Ton Vanker, someone, there's a lot of people in Europe building old Evos and Subarus now. Like Best Impreza, Carlo Baroli. They're expensive cars, but it's sort of a new industry that didn't exist before. Reminds me of filling a Mitsubishi transfer case on the Evo 8 or 9. When you put in that like precious fluid and it's like a thumb cap of fluid to run the whole car. You're like, wow, if there was a bubble and it didn't all go in, the transfer case will explode. So this blue thing, I don't know if it's off camera, but the it's a check valve, so the fluid can only travel one way from bottom to top, not the other way. There's like a spring and a diaphragm in it. That took what felt like about 15 years to fill. I'm going to try to heat up the oil for the next one. So I don't think I can actually inject it efficiently. This plug is a little rubber o-ring, so I'm not like cranking on it or anything. It's aluminum. All right, so that's one. Um, should we put this on the car or build the other one first? Let's take a poll. Okay, we'll put it on the car. So to anybody who was looking earlier and saying, dude, those top hats, those don't look like GCA top hats. Well, <laughs> you were right, they weren't. I had to take everything apart again and put on the old group in GCA top hats that I had. So that was fun. Here we are, after about, I don't know, 12 hours total. Working the wheels, no spacers. Um, all the stuff is in the original struts, the uh, helper springs, everything. Got some good camber on each wheel. I'm about to measure it now that it's down. I measured it, put it in the air. Uh, it looks to me by my eye like we have negative two in the rear and negative three in the front, but we're gonna go find out. Take it for a spin, then come back and measure it up again, see how the alignment is. 